Hello, my name is Richard Wallovich, and I'm the corresponding author for this article, Subjective Endpoints in Clinical Trials, The Case for a Blinded Independent Central Review. This is a multidisciplinary overview of the field of endpoint assessment committees. The objective of the review is to define the EAC and provide an overview of its applicability, highlight the critical roles EAC can play in drug development, provide a process map for designing and conducting a regulatory appropriate EAC, and explain the different types of EACs. An endpoint assessment committee is a blinded assessment of subjective clinical data related to patient safety or efficacy that is independent of the site and sponsor. It is also called a CEC or an IRC. It is often performed because of requests from regulatory agencies. It minimizes bias and variability as compared to site assessments, and it can increase the probability of an accurate assessment by using subspecialty trained experts. And it also allows for uniformed independent reviewer training on study. It is usually performed when the assessment is a primary or important secondary endpoint of an advanced clinical trial. Let's take a look at a complex EAC study of melanoma. In this study, the overall tumor burden of the patient needs to be assessed. Therefore, we have a radiological assessment of total non-cutaneous tumor burden, as well as dermatological assessment of cutaneous tumor burden. This data is summarized in a CRF, along with information from biopsies and selected clinical listings as well as other patient information. And an oncologist is also added to facilitate a gestalt understanding of the patient disposition. There are two methodological approaches to conducting an EAC assessment, a consensus panel and a multi-reader BICR. A consensus panel is a multi-directional group assessment of the patient status. This approach has the following important advantages. It provides a gestalt understanding of the patient and allows for EAC data to be digital and non-digital. However, it has the following disadvantages. Potential for the assessment to be the result of a group think process rather than total data driven. It's hard to schedule and it's impractical to perform on study training and testing since the technique usually requires independent assessments and the conclusions have limited precision since they result from only a single assessment. In contrast, the multi-reader blinded independent central review BICR approach is a one-way hierarchical communication where results of one or more reviewers feed into the next assessment, as can be seen with the radiology, pathology, and dermatological results going into the oncologist. Unlike the consensus approach, all data from the BICRs need to be digital. Temporal frequency of performing these assessments are not an issue since all the reviewers are independent. This assessment review paradigm allows for easy ongoing training and testing and the degree of precision of the assessment can be titrated. Precision is related to the number of independent reviews. The number of assessments is predicated on the potential for bias along with the variability and complexity of the assessment. In this study, the site assessment of pathology is sufficient whereas a single independent read is necessary for radiology. Because of the large cutaneous tumor burden, the dermatological assessments require pre-measurements as well as an independent review. With the most precision, a double read and, if necessary, adjudication read reserved for the oncologist assessment of overall patient status. So in conclusion, an EAC can mitigate subjective assessment heterogeneity and bias by using a well-trained team of experts. 
The precision of the assessment can be titrated by utilizing different BICR paradigms. In the future, we expect to see more EACs in general and BICR EACs in particular due to increase in regulatory agency recommendations and advances in telemedicine and information systems. Thank you.